Hey guys, in the next part of this class, we're going to talk about what is the moment of inertia of a uniform disc spinning about its center. So what do I mean? If that's my radius r, it's going to spin like this, around the center point, right? Okay, so what do we got there? All right, well, so it's a uniform, it's a uniform disc. So mass is spread out throughout the entire disk, right? And there's a certain radius r. Now there's a trick to this. What's the trick? The trick is we are going to treat our disk like little baby hoops, right? Which we already know the moment of inertia of the hoop, right? Because we found that in our last class. That is mr squared. Right, we know that. So let's find what that is for, let's find out what that is if I take a whole bunch of hoops and I add them up. Okay, so the moment of inertia of a disk is equal to the integral dm r squared, right? That's just the equation of taking a whole bunch of hoops and add them up. Remember what the integral sign is, right? It's a summation sign that's been stretched out and made into this giant S-like thing. Okay, so what we have to do is we need to get R in terms of M, or M in terms of R. So we have to think about our disk. So if I have a disk here, right, we're going to take a one hoop, one hoop, an infinitesimally small hoop, right? Yo, man, I'm a hoop in a disc, right? So we're going to take that hoop, right? It's just one hoop in a disc. Now, there's going to be an infinite amount of hoops, right? They're going to start at the center, and they're going to progressively get bigger, right, until we get include all the hoops and we turn that thing into a complete disk is that clear let's think about that for a second you take a whole bunch of hoops and you keep putting one hoop around another hoop and your disk gets bigger and bigger each time you put another hoop around it okay so each hoop has a radius, right? And they're different, right? Here, this is a radius r. Now, we usually do something when we're doing these kinds of problems. We usually mean lowercase r to be a variable. When I mean variable, I mean it changes, right? It's not gonna stay constant. Where when I use big R, I mean constant. Right? So what we have is we have a whole bunch of little hoops, and each hoop has a radius of little r, right? It's different. It depends on which hoop you're talking about. But the disk itself, right? That's the disk we're trying to solve. That's the actual uniform disk we started with, and that has a radius of big R, right? So we usually mean big R, constant, little r, variable. Okay, so we have a bunch of hoops in our disk. So let's uh, clean up our drawing a little bit. So I have one infinitesimally small hoop inside my uniform disk, right? Now here's where it gets a little weird. Here, this disk has a certain thickness, right? It has a thickness, dr, right? It's, that hoop is actually, it's somewhat thick, right? It's infinitesimally thick, but there is some thickness of it. Right? It's really, really small. So my hoop actually looks like that, right? 
and it has some really, really, really small thickness, dr. Okay, so it's a certain thickness. Right, and that doesn't change. So as I go out and out and out with my hoops, my thickness always stays the same. But what does change is my circumference, right? That changes. My circumference of my hoop is going to be 2 pi r, right? That's just the circumference of a hoop. You guys remember that from your SATs. So if you remember back to in class when we were working with the finding the moment of inertia of a long, thin rod, we had to come up with a ratio to discuss how m, or how dm, depended on r. Right, so here we have to do the same thing. But if I have a hoop at the center, right, that's gonna have much less mass than if I have a hoop at the outside, because at the center my radius is small, I'm only gonna have a ring that's about that big, but when I'm way out here, I'm going to have a giant ring, I'm going to have more mass. So there's not going to be a linear relationship like there was with the 1D rod between dm and dx, or dr in this case. But it is a nicely two-dimensional object, right? And the amount of mass per unit area, mass per area. Well now, this stays fixed, right? If I take a little bit of mass here, and I take a little mass there, or if I take a little mass here, or if I take a little ring there, the mass per unit area stays fixed, right? So the mass per unit area of a little blob in there is the same as the mass per area of the whole darn thing. All right, so this ratio, mass over the area, that's fixed. Well, what's the area of a disk? Well, that's mass pi r squared. Just the area of the disk in question. All right, now here's where things get weird. Imagine I have a hoop, if I have a thing, right? And how do I want to find the area of this face on a piece of paper. Well, I take its length from here to here times the thickness, and that'll tell me the area on this edge of paper. Now, if I make it a circle or a hoop by rotating it, the thickness, the thickness times the circumference or the length gives me the area. The thickness times the circumference gives me the area. So for my infinitesimally small little hoop here, I know how to write down what the area is. Well, first off, its mass is going to be infinitesimally small. It's going to be dm. The area, right, this is going to be 2 pi r. That's the circumference around the hoop times dr. That's how thick my hoop is. Okay, so now, again, don't do this in calculus class, right off the bat. Calculus teacher will chase you around the room with a broom. Um, you gotta prove this, but in physics class, sometimes we can take a little liberties with math because we know it's going to work out. Right, so we're gonna cry chop that bad boy, Wacha! And we're gonna solve for dm. We're gonna get dm is, the pi's are gonna cancel, dm is going to be m over r squared times 2r dr. Right. And now we have an equation for the infinitesimal amount of mass. So we can take this bad boy and plug it in here. So the moment inertia of a disk becomes, right, we just plug this in m r squared, m over r squared, times 2r dr times r squared. All right, so now we've got to do some arithmetic. First, let's get all the constants out, right? m, that's the mass of the whole disk. That's a constant. Big R, remember, big R is the radius of the whole disk 
That's a constant. We can pull that out. Two, right? Two is a constant, right? I've got to multiply our little r's together. And we can rewrite this to be 2m r squared. Right? My integral is going to go from 0. That's an infinitesimally small hoop. And it's going to grow until we have a hoop that is completely at the edge of the disk. This is going to be times r cubed dr. Now we integrate. r cubed dr is just r to the fourth over 4. So we have 2m r squared times r to the fourth over 4. We do some arithmetic. The moment of inertia of the disk becomes 1 half m r squared.